Let's record this bass with one mic, a Sennheiser MD-421. This is a cardioid microphone, so it will exhibit proximity effect, boosting the low end the closer it is placed to the source. For this video, we arrived at a distance of 4 inches. Use your ears to determine the best distance for your situation. The 421 has a 5 position bass roll off switch that gradually decreases the low end response as you move it from M to S. I usually leave it at M. Not only does the distance make a difference in tone, but where you aim the mic also makes a difference. Here is the sound of the 421 aimed at the center of the speaker. And at the edge of the voice coil. We decided to leave the mic at the center of the speaker because we like the clarity of tone. Let's try a different mic. The Shure Beta 52A is designed for low frequency rich sounds like kick drum and bass. This mic has no user adjustable tone controls, but it has built in emphasis centered around 50 Hz and 4000 Hz. This is a super cardioid mic and produces more low end the closer it gets to the sound source. We liked the sound of this mic at 5 inches. Here is the sound of the Beta 52A aimed at the center of the speaker. And at the edge of the voice coil. We got the best sound at the center of the speaker. Let's try another mic. The Shure SM57 LC is an excellent all-purpose dynamic cardioid mic that costs little and has proven itself over the years. It was not designed specifically for low-end instruments, but let's try it. This is also a cardioid mic and produces more low-end the closer it gets to a sound source. We liked the sound of this mic at 1 inch. Here is the sound of the SM57 LC aimed at the center of the speaker. And at the edge of the voice coil. We like the sound at the edge of the voice coil because we felt it was fuller and rounder. That concludes part one of this bass miking video. In part two, we'll look at combining a mic with a DI box. Thanks for watching.